Hey guys, I'm Michael Allen from TravelCostaRicaNow.com. Hey, anybody, anybody that knows me knows I love coffee, and if you follow our Facebook, you definitely know I love coffee. Well, I'm, I have a favorite coffee in Costa Rica. I'm not sure why it's my favorite, but it is. And uh, I think they're going to tell me why it's my favorite, actually. Uh, I just want to make sure it's very clear. I am getting nothing to make this video. I did the, the, not even a pound. Yes, the, the, this guy did not come to me and go, "Hey, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you make a video." <laughs> I came, I searched him out. So we're going to learn a little bit about coffee. I want to tell you right now, although where we are, okay, we're in La Fortuna, uh, where we live. Um, we're on the road to the waterfall. Uh, his coffee place is called um, Down to Earth Coffee. Now, he's here because tourists are here. He's got a mini tour here of coffee. But his, his uh, coffee plantation is not here. So, with no further ado, we're going to be talking to Matthias, also known as the coffee guy. <laughs> and he's going to tell me why I like his coffee the best. We can either talk about Costa Rica coffee in general, or yours sure. specifically. Or no, actually, to... actually, by differentiating mine, we, we can learn about coffee. First of all, uh, a lot of people wonder why uh, Costa Rican coffee has such a good name, and what happens is that. Well, what are some of the top, real quick, but just so they know, what are kind of the, the top coffee p coffees? Oh well, of course, everybody knows Colombia. Col Colombia is important. Uh, Guatemala. Of course, Costa Rica, some of the African countries like Kenya and such. But what happens is that Costa Rica has a higher average elevation. Okay, most of the central plateau, okay, from San Ramon to Cartago, is uh, at an average elevation of what, 3,400 feet, and that makes for good coffee right uh, so that is what makes us famous that uh, our average is better than in other countries um, of course there are peaks like my region which which is called Dota Tarrasu and that's where um, coffee grows up to about 6,000 feet in, in exactly my farm so, we, so do we like 6,000 better than we like 3,400 Oh yeah, big time. Coffee directly relates uh, to the elevation. Okay, for instance, uh, if you grow coffee at 3,500 feet, you're gonna do good. Okay, you're gonna make decent coffee. But the coffee at 4,000 is gonna be better than that, and the coffee at 5,000 is gonna be better than the 5,000, and so on. Coffee quality directly relates to elevation, and there are three main ranges. 4,500 to 6,500 feet of elevation, which is called SHB. Then below 4,500 to 3,100 feet of elevation, which is called HB. And then below 3,100 is MB or MHB. Uh, what, they, what those names refer to is the hardness of the coffee which is a product of the density. Which the is obviously higher, changes the taste. Of oh, concentrates everything better. Yes, it's more condensed. The traits of aroma and flavor are concentrated. So for instance, SHB, which is where I am, actually I am in the higher end of the SHB region, is a strictly hard bean. As you can see... SHB, strictly hard, hard bean. bean. <laughs> then HB is hard bean. They cannot guarantee that all of their beans are gonna be uh, hard, okay? So it's only HB. And then MMB, which is medium hard bean. Below MHB is coffee reserve for your worst enemy. <laughs> uh, so let me show you, take a look at my beans. They're so small, right? I wish we could show that, but yeah. you can barely see it. Well, I'm used to seeing coffee beans like Huge, Big two or three times well, airy looking. Okay, well, th this is what happens. In normal circumstances, you are allowed to think that uh, coffee that is big is better because we associate size with goodness. But basically, uh, in coffee, the opposite is true. The smaller is better. Why? Because in the higher elevations, the temperature at night goes down to sometimes even. 43, 42 Fahrenheit, which 
creates the conditions for a slower metabolism rate. So the bean spends an average of three months longer maturing and ripening, and that makes it small, dense, and hard. Here, try to pierce this with your fingernail. Well, it's, that's not going to happen. No, it's impossible. I'll try, I'll try my teeth, but that yeah. probably break it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's impossible because this is um, this is what it is. Uh, known as SHB, strictly hard bean, and it is now, that hard would be as on the a label? rock. Would that be on well, the label? that's the thing. Okay, SHB is the single most important element of quality you can find in a label that you will never see. Why? Because coffee companies don't want you to know it exists. Uh, SHB is key in any blend, all the way down from 3 to 5% to about 15, 20%. Okay, and it is the coffee that shapes the flavor. It's the coffee that gives it the acidity, okay, and, and the good taste. So, if you knew that a coffee exists and, it's, and that it is so good that uh, coffee companies use it in a smaller percentage to flavor a blend and make it taste good, wouldn't you look for the brand that offers you the most SHB in the blend? or? Like in my case, 100% pure SHB. No, you people are always no, going to no, strive that, for the best. No offense, but why does this sound like drugs? <laughs> like cutting a... <laughs> you know, like, what, you know, pure cocaine, but why would I sell pure cocaine listen, when I can put a bunch listen, of baking listen, soda in it? Listen, listen, coffee is like a drug. Each hand that touches it cuts it down to the point that there's literally garbage. Actually, I invite your, your viewers to do a little test. Have them uh, take the beans that they have at home and spread them in a kitchen counter and separate them by size and texture. That's another thing. The, the SHB bean dehydrates because it matures and ripens during the summer. So it develops a texture. It's like ripples. So uh, if you have a bean that claims to be SHB and when you see it roasted, it doesn't have ripples it doesn't have marks so it's smooth. in the texture yeah if it is a smooth it's lowland okay the the ripples in the coffee in the industry we call we call them um corrugated or corrugation like corrugated yeah, yeah, cardboard yeah. okay that is solid visual proof that what you have in your hand is an shb so you want that you definitely want the you want that so basically we're doing the opposite of everything the smaller bean, the one with the ugly surface, those are the good. Those are the good. And almost nobody knows that. <laughs> no, actually, we, we, we value the opposite better. Actually, one more point, which is very important. It relates to taste. If you, the beans that you buy are oily on the outside, that means that bean has been over-roasted. Okay, can I say, can I swear in camera, Mike? You can. Can I say Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you go to Starbucks, you're going to see... Everything he says, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the bean that, again, you, but it looks good. It looks good. It Not looks only good. that, it looks moist and fresh and so on. And it's actually a bean has been taken so far beyond its, its chemical balance with the heat of the roaster that it precipitated the oils and the oils came to the surface and those oils are bitter. So sometimes people wonder why Starbucks coffee is so strong or you know why it tastes so bitter, sometimes burnt. That's because it because is. the oils are in the surface. Well, can I say you have the ugliest beans I've ever seen? Sure, and the smallest, <laughs> ugliest beans that do not shine. Look at this. There's absolutely no shine in my coffee because I pride myself as a, as a grower and roaster uh, to, to produce coffee that has all of the oils inside of the bean. That come out outside. during the process of making the coffee. Yes, of course. When you brew my coffee, you're going to see that the top of your cup or the top of the pitcher or the French press is going to be like gasoline on water. You know, you're going to see oh, like the... A Film. Yes, yes, you're going to see that, and that means that my oils were inside of the bean, and now they are in your brew. And those beans, I mean, those oils are going to taste good. 
So yeah, there's a, there's actually a lot of misconceptions about coffee. Uh, coffee. So you start getting the lowlands, you start getting oily beans, you start getting <laughs> big beans. Yeah. So it's just it's sacrificing taste, it's sacrifice. I mean everything, everything, everything. And and but the problem, and this is this is this is an example that I use often. Okay, if I invite you over to my house for chicken soup, okay, the minute you taste it, you're gonna know it sucks. Why? Because I make lousy chicken soup. <laughs> Why can you identify that condition in my chicken soup? Because you have tried your mom's, your grandma's, even high school cafeteria chicken soup is better than mine. The problem is that in coffee you don't have a reference, which is very sad. My theory. My reference could be Folgers. <laughs> well, oh God. Okay, Sorry. but no. But let me tell you. Let me tell you that, that, that that's the thing. You can't. You can't laugh. Or uh, at people, or or think that oh man, they don't know anything about coffee. Is that nobody's providing the options, okay? And the ones that do, they do it at, at an outrageous price. Well, That's let me, the problem. Let me and let, but, but let me tell you because this is important. It is very sad to see that situation in the United States because my theory is that most Americans will be born, live, and die without ever tasting a cup of 100% pure coffee, okay? While the United States is the largest buyer of coffee in the world, and you guys have one of the top highest average prices per cup of coffee in the whole world. So <laughs> come on, you know, you should be getting the best. Yes, we should. That's, 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 that's what's sad. But what you have, first of all, you have very, very shady, coffee companies, you know, that hire advertising agencies, and <laughs> I know what they do because I used to be in advertising be before I became a coffee farmer. So basically, uh, what these companies do is they stimulate your imagination, okay? Through the shiny bean, through and the, the big... shiny bean and the amazing, you know, stop motion camera and these concepts. And listen, all coffee companies ask uh, I mean, all coffee companies tell you about elevation. You know, they talk about mountain-grown coffee, they talk about highland-grown coffee, right? But has any of those coffee companies ever told you how tall their mountain was? <laughs> now now you guys know it's... that it matters. The, the highest the elevation, the better the coffee. But um, they use a lot of fancy words and they don't commit to anything, okay? At the same time, for instance, you see- So they like us being uneducated, basically. Of course, they get away with murder. I mean, they have made you guys believe that coffee is black. Coffee is not black. Actually, quality and purity in a, in a cup of coffee is um, uh, reflected in a reddishness, like tea. Actually, coffee should look more like tea than coffee. But if I give you a cup of coffee that looks like tea, you're gonna think that I water it down or that yeah, I'm weird, trying right. to play a joke on you or whatever. So you know there's there's so many things but there's also another another concept that they get away with and that's when you see a bag that says sun drive. Okay? If you see a bag that says sun drive please call somebody and ask them for how long. Because if you're gonna sell the concept of sun dry coffee you need to guarantee that it goes six to eight days and reach the 11% moisture content in in a bed or in a patio under the sun. But coffee companies don't do that. They, well, it, takes, it would take too long, right? Yeah, Obviously. of course. <laughs> Everybody's into productivity. Nobody is into furthering quality. So what they do is they do one or two days under the sun and they, with the excuse that they need to be very precise to bring that coffee to 11% moisture content, then they put it into mechanical dryers, and 18 hours later, the coffee is ready. And it's sun dried. <laughs> you lost out. You lost out. So yeah, there's a, actually uh, uh, Americans, especially, should get very, very demanding with coffee companies. Just to give you an idea, in the coffee world, there are two standards of preparation in in, in, in the industrial world of coffee. So you can have high quality coffee or less than high quality coffee. You know what those uh, what those uh, ranges are called? 
European flush and American flush. And I guess you can tell that American flush is the lower quality. So if you go to a buyer, uh, to a coffee supplier in Brazil or something, and the guy says, so what do you want? I said, oh, no, just give me American flush. That means that the quality is lower than if you had asked for European flush. So everything that relates to coffee in the States is actually lower quality. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing. Wow, so there's a kind of game and marketing and manipulation. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And at the same time, coffee companies in the U.S. are literally making billions. There's the third wave of coffee companies and coffee houses that are giving you better. That the third wave is what came after Starbucks, okay? The independence. But at such a price that is prohibitive, you know? So, you know, there's, there's a... What could somebody a, do that doesn't, that likes coffee like me? I know a little bit more about, yeah. about coffee maybe than the regular, but what, what would somebody look for in a bag? What, would, what should they be looking for that, that a bag should say that they can kind of go, oh yeah, Matias said that... Okay, they should look for the SHB guarantee or a solid guarantee of elevation, okay? Any of those conditions would actually uh, stop that coffee from being a blend. That's totally the opposite of a single origin or a specific range. Blend which actually from now on it should be considered a four-letter word. Okay, Cause blend could be any, anything, right? Blend is, is uh, a little bit of good stuff and then lower quality. Because... To the, fill, again, to, to fill the bag. Course, I, I, I mean, coffee companies get away with murder every day and they sell you limited quality for the highest possible price. Yep. There's no way around it. If it says, a, okay, I'm, I'm assuming your so bag says 100% pure. My coffee says 100% pure Is that single origin SHB, which are very three tough conditions If to somebody beat. said 100% pure on yeah. their bag, sure. does it have, sure. that would be 100% pure. It would be 100% pure, which means that there's no, no blend. If it is a pure origin, it would mean no blend, but it could also mean that there's no additives because the additives game, actually, that should be a whole different Video. conversation. <laughs> yeah. Well, additives would be like sugar, right? Sugar, caramel, but not just that, uh, ground corn, ground what? barley. Oh. Yes, yes. Actually, watch out if you are celiac, if you need gluten-free food, be very careful because the most commercial brands in the States, and I don't want to get sued, so I'm not going to mention them, but just think of the worst. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the stuff that your grandparents and your parents drink. Uh, those brands could even add barley. It's a futures uh, prices game. If this quarter coffee is expensive and barley is cheap, boom, there it goes. And they don't even have to to report it or, or uh, acknowledge it in a list of ingredients in the bag, which if you really think, is crazy. I mean, would you expect to have a list of ingredients in a bag of coffee? No, because coffee is supposed to be coffee. pure. <laughs> yeah, supposed to be coffee. So yes, pure SHB if possible, if not HB, altitude range. But most important, mm, people have to st stop thinking about countries having the exclusive, okay, in in coffee quality. Give an example. For instance, uh, Costa Rica has seven different regions acknowledged by the Costa Rica Coffee Institute as origins, okay? The best is where my farm is, which is the Tarrasur region, and is also considered one of the top three in the world. Tarrasur produces 28% of Costa Rica's coffee, but at the same time, the average size of a farm in Terrasu is five acres. So it's a labor love, it's a family thing, okay? And the conditions of sun and land and, and soil and everything, it just, it's a privileged region for coffee. But 20 miles in a straight line from uh, our region is Turrialba, which produces a lot of coffee. Actually, the largest Costa Rican coffee estate is in Turrialba, 
but it produces a level of coffee for uh, Folgers or Maxwell House. Yeah. Well, it you know, everything is, has right? a, everything has a price. Nothing goes to waste in the in the uh, no, nothing goes to waste in the meat meat industry. Nothing goes to waste in, in the, the coffee. Industry, <laughs> in the coffee industry, right? So, um, so um, to Rialba, if you really think about it, twenty miles in a straight line from one of the top regions in the world, and they produce. Awful coffee. Now, did mainly, they mainly did they because did they decide to produce awful coffee? Because there's more. No, money it's because it's of the region. elevation. Okay. It's because of the elevation. Is the Atlantic watershed is beyond Cartago on the way to uh, Siquirres and the Caribbean side, but uh, it just doesn't have the elevation. It's very fertile land. So again, the largest Costa Rican coffee state is there. Just to give you an idea how big this place is. My farm town, Providencia, has 265 people, okay? Now, this farm, this estate, brings in an average of a thousand workers, a thousand migrant workers to work their harvest. So that farm brings into Costa Rica four times more people than my entire farm town. It's, it's massive, right? So, uh, but it's lousy quality. I mean, it doesn't compare to the quality that we produce in Tarrazo, and it's just 20 miles in a straight line. So, you know, conditions can be, can be very different. And, of course, we are in the Dota region within the Tarrazo coffee region, and Dota is a microclimate. Why? Because it's surrounded by forest and national parks, so we get more humidity. Uh, it, it's, it's very interesting, it's very interesting. It is but, interesting. <laughs> yes, very interesting, but yeah, you need to you know, make it a purpose in the next, in the next 24 hours, go and, and try to find a great cup of coffee. It's gonna set you back, I don't know, four, five, six bucks, depending on where you are, but uh, and, yeah. Don't consider Starbucks or Pete's <laughs> that cup of coffee. Uh, fine and independent, and I'm pretty sure that you'll be surprised. All right, Matias, I've learned a lot. Dad got it. Anyway, guys, um, if you happen to be in the Pertuna area, you might want to come up the Waterfall Road and find his little uh, tour he's got here. But if not, you can go here. We're going to show you where you can order his coffee if you want. And I still don't get anything, just so we're clear on that. No, he's not going to get anything. Damn, I better yeah. get at least a cup of coffee. <laughs> anyway, I offered you a cup of coffee and you rejected it. So. <laughs> this is his email address, and uh, he does he does send it around, so no problem there. Anyway, thanks, Matias. Thank you, Appreciate Mike. It. we got to do a couple more because I, I wanted to talk to you about fair trade coffee. Oh, I wow, wanted to yeah, talk about organic. That's I my favorite to topic. Yeah. I want to talk about a few other things. Anyway, guys, I'm Michael Allen, TravelCoastWeekendNow.com. Peace, guys. Hope it helps.